Right. So uh, we have been talking about this bab two, which is uh, per sum and per ekonan, as you can uh, see from here. Right. Bab two, classification and per sum and per ekonan. So today I will finish this chapter off. Okay, with the last question. Right, question seven. And question seven, okay. Firstly, you have to hitung nilai x and y. After that, we have to do the jadu persamaan perkawanan. And lastly, we have to do the penyata kedudukan kewangan. All right. So firstly, let's kirakan what is the amount for x and y. All right. So if you're ready for today's class, give me a ready in the chat box. Ready? Give me a ready in the chat box. All right. Great. Okay. So seems like everyone is ready. So let me continue. Okay. So here, let's hit on X and Y. So what are the X and Y? This one. X and Y. So how much is X? We don't know yet. But definitely we know how much is Y, isn't it? Then, so how much is Y? Y, this Joomla on your right, is always the same with the one on your credit side. All right, the 28,800. By the way, this is the credit. Always remember the left side. Uh, eh? Yeah, eh, no, 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 no. What am I saying? The left side of your ledger, this is what normally you call ledger. Here is the debit, and here is the credit side. All right, it's fixed. So debit is on your left, and credit is on your right side. Okay, so the 28,800 on your debit must be the same with the one on your credit side. So meaning my Y should be, I know Y is equals to 28,800. You okay, know what about X? Very simple. If you want to get X, you just have to use this Joomla because normally we, we use X plus 56,000, we will add up everything here and then get our Joomla, right? So since now X is unknown and we really know our Joomla, so you just use 28,800 minus uh, 2,400 minus 41 minus 5,600. And then you get your X, your model. So you try it, so you get... Uh, X should be 28,800 minus 2,400 minus 41 minus 5,600. You will get 20,759 years. Okay. So now, you know, so simple. You get uh, X and Y. Is it? All right. Okay. So... Okay, so that's my sheet. So this is seven, question seven, seven. Okay, seven A. So X is uh, R N. This is X, right? 20,759. And Y equals to RM 28,800. Simple two marks. Got it? All right. And then now we go to B. Okay. So this B is uh, we have to do this jadaw persamaan perkenan and the question really prepare this table for us. 
So when the table is really prepared for us, we can straight away copy it on your uh your text pad. All right, and then you start with you, you start off uh this with all this stuff. All right, so you just copy and paste. So Urus Niaga plus two you got alatan pejabat alatan pejabat directory account from ABT. So quickly, ah, uh, copy it on your paper on your notebook. ABT. Modal Ambilan. Then this is a belanja arm. Belum Baya. Okay, then this is the asset. And then here is a liability plus equity. Equity problem. Sure, you're using a ruler. Systematically. Okay. And we should have all the RM. Right, so that's it. So make sure your starting is well prepared. All right, so all these things are neatly prepared, very important. All right, so with that, are you done? If you're done, give me a done in the chat box. So this Belanja Am Belum Baya is a liability. Okay, if you see a balloon buyer, a balloon buyer is always a liability, therefore it is here. All right, same as your account balloon buyer. Okay, so for those that haven't done yet, I will give you another one minute to prepare it. All right, so continue at 8.40. Okay, so yang dah siap punya, you may try to do it yourself because I think you really know how to do it. Can done a lot of exercises. All right. So I'll continue. So now, for this question, you can see that they're already giving you all these are actually what? All these numbers are actually Baki. Right? Your balance from 
uh, in the beginning of uh, 31st, I mean, at the uh, at 31st March 2021. Okay, so current we are doing for April. Can you see uh, April. Therefore, all this baki, maybe you put April 1. Yes, you have to know that the 31st March when your item or 31st March, okay, is the same as 1st of April. Just one day difference, right? after the 31st March, the next day is 1st of March. Therefore, the figure here, 31st March, we will bring into 1st of April. And now we will be doing uh, the account bagi bulan April. You can see it. Okay, so alatan baja baja just copy. 8,700. Inventory is 5,000. Uh, account bulan is 3,500. Bank is 9900 to 91700. Account balloon bayar is 2,400. Good. Your model is uh, X, but we recalculated the X is 20,759. Then the ambulance. Do you have ambulance for now? No, then you just uh, skip it. All right. And then there is a belanja arm. Um, Belum bayar, which is 41 ringgit. Uh, look at this one. Uh. This should be ambulan or... Wait, uh, let me check. Be a bit too nice. Okay, let's add one more at the back. One more column because sometimes uh, you have to add yourself. Okay. So let's say for this untung bersih, 5,600. Okay, so you just add one more one. Normally they will give you that, but maybe for this question they forgot to give you, so you put it in yourself. So the untung bursi is 5,600. So you just put 5,600. So this is a zero. Right. So just leave it blank like that. So make sure even in the beginning, your asset, you add up everything together, must be equal to your liability plus equity per million. Add up everything here. That right. should be the same. So after here, after your Baki, all these are your Baki, then we may move on to the April 3rd. All right. So you beli barang ni agak beli nilai 7,400 secara kredit. Whenever you secara kredit and membeli, meaning this one we have to record in account belum bayar. Kan? All right. So when you beli barang ni agak, your barang ni agak akan bertambah. What is the barang ni agak? The inventory lah. All right, so first you write the date is third, okay, and then is inventory, but tambah, so you plus 7,400, and then you beli secara apa? Secara credit, so secara credit, your account belum bayar at 7,400. And when you check, you see that your asset bertambah 7,400 ringgit, and your liability bertambah 7,400 ringgit juga. So it is the same. So when it inbound sama, then 99% your answer is correct. Okay, so next, uh, ten, uh, six. All right, six. Mengambil, uh, mengambil tunai di pejabat 200 ringgit untuk bayar bill electric rumor. Use the tunai, the money from your company to pay for your house bill electric. So this is definitely an ambulance. Kan? So if it is an ambulance, and you ambil apa? Ambil tunai. Maksud, there's two things here, two account. So one is your tunai berkurang, and then the other one is ambulance. Kan? So in 6th of uh, April, your tunai berkurang, so you have the minus, minus minus bracket, 200. Right? And then ambulance, so in ambulance here, you put 200 ringgit. 
Now, remember, this is ambulana, so you don't have to put minus here. Okay, because this is an ambulan. So you just put 200 there. Why? Because ambulance and degree is actually a minus. All right? So it's actually a the minus. Da. So if you here put minus again, you put bracket again, you know maths, right? So if here is minus and you put minus here again, it becomes plus, which is wrong. Right, because ambulance is minus, therefore we just put original 200 here. You do because ambulance in the penyata kedudukan kewangan, we have to minus it out. This is like the, the, the formula. Kan? If you remember your equity per million linear formula, we use apa? we use modal tambah untung rugi. You see, minus we have to minus off the ambulance. Ah. Right, the front here is minus. Therefore, let's say if you put minus and then bracket again, minus 200 again, how, what it becomes? It becomes a plus 200. That's why I cannot. That's why here we cannot put minus 200. That's why here you put just the 200 you do. Do you get it? If yes, give me a yes. So the ambulance is a bit special case here. All right. Okay, so next, uh, so minus 200 equals to minus 200 as well. Okay, so next is uh, 7, okay, sorry, 10. 10 is uh, pelanggan, pelanggan means your ABT lah, right? This is ABT. Menjelaskan 15% daripada jumlah hutangnya dengan check bernilai 500 ringgit. Now, how much is a hutang? How much is a ABT? So you have to find out. Okay, so sekarang your ABT is 3,500 ringgit so far, right? Jumlah ialah 3,500 ringgit. And they check up 15%. So use 3,500 ringgit times 15%. How much you get? 525. All right? So they check up, they tell us 15%, which is 525. Dengan check berapa? Check 500 ringgit. So, hutang you berkurang 5 to 5, but your check hanya berkurang 500. Then, what about the other 25 ringgit? Maksud this, 25 ringgit, you dapat, this is a discount diberi. Or you berikan discount to your pelanggan, to your customer. So, if you want to do it here, so firstly, your you terima check, alright dengan check. So you terima check dari pelanggan masuk your bank bertambah five hundred ringgit. And at the same time, your ABT berkurang the fifteen percent of this three thousand five hundred five to five. So you minus because berkurang. Okay, and this discount delivery I tell you, when you berikan discount. Uh, kepada your pelanggan, this is actually a belanja. Uh, and belanja should be in your untung bersih minus, right? Because it's belanja. So, how much? 500 minus 525 goes to 25. So, when you do the maths in a Tengok your asset, ada tak sama dengan your liability plus equity pemilik. So, you use minus 525 plus 500 equals to minus 25. And you compare to your liability, A juga minus 25. Okay, betul. Alright, so clear, clear, clear. A, and then at the same time, A, this is uh, the same question, right? This is 15, 8, 18 should be this one, or 15 should be this one. Ah. All right, okay, okay. So now we go to 15. What does 15 say? 15 say, uh, membeli ala penyaman udara 
uh, bernilai 1280 secara tunai what is a alat penyiraman udara this is a uh, uh, actually a lengkapan isn't it all right so if you have a new thing normally you have to add it all right alatan penyiraman udara so you put it in now you just add one more in between okay which i was not aware also but it's okay you just you try to squeeze it now okay so this is a lengkapan so sometimes a very good give you doesn't mean that this is all it is right just like tadi kamu punya untung bersih you have to add also and then the lengkapan the new one so you have to add it also a lengkapan and then this is a 15 so you buy a new lengkapan so you add 1280 alat penyaman udara you know what what it is right it is like a aircon okay so 1280 and then secara tunai so when you beli barang you buy a maksud your tunai akan berkurang berkurang 1280 3 minus 1280 Okay, then we go to 18. 18 jalan. Okay, 18 is jalan. Barang niaga secara tunai bernilai 3,000. Kos barang niaga tersebut adalah 2,000. So, you jual barang niaga secara tunai. So, you dapat, you terima 3,000 ringgit for tunai. So, your tunai bertambah 3,000. Tambah 3,000. Okay, but now they tell us that kos barang niaga the is just 2,200 ringgit, meaning this 2,200 ringgit is our inventory. So from your inventory minus out 2,300, this is a cost. Okay, with that being said, your, you draw 3,000 and then your cost, you minus done 2,300, meaning you add 700 ringgit. This 700 ringgit is your untung. Is it not? So your hasil. So 700 ringgit you put into your untung gosi. When you try minus 2,300 plus 3,000, you get 700. And then you compare with your equity plus uh, liability is 700 juga. Okay, the last one, 20th. Menjelaskan belanja am belum bayar dengan tunai. So now I say menjelaskan belanjaan belum bayar. So how much is the belanjaan belum bayar? So kita ada baki 41 ringgit. So meaning all this 41 ringgit telah dijelaskan. Right. So you minus 41. Terus orang tak cakap berapa kan? So when they didn't say berapa and they say menjelaskan. So you just minus off everything. Okay. Jelaskan let's say 41 ringgit. And at the same time, dengan apa? Dengan tunai. Meaning your tunai will have to minus 41 ringgit also. Yeah. All right. So minus 41, minus 41. Okay. So done, done, all clear. Once all are cleared. Then draw line. So uh, this is the last date of April is the date, right? Okay. So you just add up everything, bring it down. Okay, so add. 
the line. 41 minus 41, 0. And then your untung will say, uh, 5600 minus 25 plus 700. That's 6275. All right. After that, jumlah. Nice up to here, up to here. Okay, so now we add up all the asset. So you use 8,700 plus the lengkapan. Oops, I can't see. The lengkapan plus the Inventory plus the complementary mill plus the bank and plus the two nine. Juna. So you get three six six seven five. Then what about this liability? So you use nine thousand eight hundred plus 20, Ah, okay. Now this ambulance, remember, this ambulance always we have to minus. So even though here it show positive 200, but we have to minus 200. All right, for this one, and then zero, don't have to do anything about it. Then lastly, the untung plus 6275. And then you get, you see, so there is an arrow. Okay, let me see again. So you see, now this question, we got error. Because for this one, we get 36,634. So we have to find out where the arrow is. Okay, because it should be inbound. If the inbound meaning other salah somewhere. All right. So now, maybe is it the calculation problem? It is in the 2 nice. So, okay. So it is in the 2 nice. So we have to check. Okay, so first, Whenever you see there is that summer gasini, one thing you have to do is you firstly you go and minus what is the difference. And the child, what is the difference actually? All right? So you use uh 36,675 minus the 36,634. So what is the difference? The difference is actually 41 ringgit. Hey, why 41 ringgit left? Okay, so 41 ringgit mean this one, right? Which is uh the you remember this one 41 ringgit tadi lah yang menjelaskan belanjaan belum bayar dengan tunai ini. Kan? Okay, so we go and check it again. So when we bayar, when we jelaskan belanjaan belum bayar, so we minus 41 ringgit. Correct? Betul, kan? Okay, and then dengan secara tunai. So when it is secara tunai, of course we have to minus 41 ringgit again in the tunai. So, tak ada salah. Right, okay. When you check, you, you recorded it correctly on the asset side and also the liability side is betul juga. Okay, now next, try to add up again. See the calculation betul atau tidak. Okay, sometimes you might calculate it wrongly. Kan? Okay, so I will try again. So here I'll use uh, 1,700 minus 200 again. Okay, and then minus 1,280 plus 3,000. This one. And uh, lastly, of course, there's a minus 41 here, which I didn't see. Okay, so I have to minus 41 ringgit. Okay, that, uh, my tuna is actually the uh, 3,179. Oh, so maksudnya tadi, so I uh, forget to minus 41 ringgit from here. Is it? So when I change this one and I add up all the asset again, all the baki gasini, then I will get a new jumla, which is 36634. And when I get this figure and I compare with the figure on the liability plus equity permit side, a 36634 juga. So this is imangda. Right? So this should be correct. You know what I mean? 
So if you have done, give me a done in the chat box. All right, so this is how you check. Whenever you see your Joomla tak imbang, there must be a problem somewhere, which you need to go and check it out, find out, and then you do the uh, correction needed for it. Get okay, even done, give me a done. Good. Okay, next. Let's take out our question again. So, is that all? No. Last one. We have to menyediakan penyata kedudukan kewangan pada 30 April 2021. Okay, so now we have to do a PKK for it. All right. So, a PKK. Okay. Actually, once you have done this jadual, we don't need PKK anymore. I mean, we don't need this question anymore, right? Okay, but you can take this as a reference. But actually, from here, from your jadual here, okay, just need to remember a bit of the format. Go to C. Okay, so I'll take one, two, three, four. Four, five, one, two, three, four, five. Too much. Okay, so firstly, the name was the name again. The name of Penega is Penega An. Wa Chun. Okay. Chun. And then we have to do the penyata kedudukan kewangan pada when? Pada the third April 2021. Okay. Then The middle, you draw a line. Gaga. Okay. Then there must be RM, RM here. RM, RM. Okay. So now, start with your PKK. Should we start on your left first? Okay. And you should start off with the asset bukan semasa. Yeah. Right, so what are the asset bukan semasa, alatan pejabat, and lengkapan? Right, these two are the typical asset bukan semasa. So you just put alatan pejabat, which is uh, this figure, I use this one because now we are doing PKK by the 30th April 2021, which is ini, kan? April 30th. So here you put 8,700, and then for lengkapan is 1,200. 80. Oh, yeah, link up one. All right, so now we add them up. Add the two items together. Then put the line wherever you want to do a Joomla. Okay, so 8,700 plus 1,280 equals to 9,980. After your asset broken semester, it will be your asset semester. So what are your assets and master? Your inventory. Just copy from your jadwal. Your inventory. After that is your account belum terima, your ABT. After that is your bank. All right, bank. Your tunai. So your tunai. And then you just copy all the figure. So your inventory is 10,100. See, you already calculated it. All you need to do now is just transfer the information in the jadwal into your PKK here. All right, then your account limit is 2,975. So you put it in 2,975. Okay, then your bank is 10,400. So and then your 29 is 3,179. 3,179. Okay, put it 
on your left uh, column. Why? Because we have to do some adding. Kan? If you put it here, a bit hard. You see, you need to use this one plus this one plus this one plus this one plus this one, then get the answer. So when we ask, uh, so how much is the SSM muscle sahaja? Then you need to use calculator and add again. Uh, and then it tells us how much is the SSM muscle. You don't have to, right? So why do we have to make our, make our life uh, complicated? Don't have to, right? So you first, you add up first. You do step by step systematically. So you add up all this and put it here. Done. Ah, like that. See? So when they ask, or when they ask you, uh, how much is the asset semester? Berapa ka jumlah asset semester? Asset semester is just here, these four items. So we can quickly tell people, oh, asset semester is 26,654. Should we from this PKK? And when they want to ask, how much is the asset bukan semester? Oh, it is 9,980. Ah, that's why we, you know, put it in a different column when we want to do some adding all right so you add up because this one then only we add these two up to get the joomla asset all right but as i said normally i won't add up first i wait to the end so after here i will come to my right side here and start off with my equity per million and underline it Okay, so this equity formula always you start with your model, or we call excuse me the model hour. All right, so the model is this one, the twenty thousand seven hundred fifty nine. You put it in two o seven five nine. Okay, after that, if we have untung besi, then you add up your untung besi plus untung besi. So the untung besi is actually six two seven five. So we add up first. Get twenty seven thousand and thirty four. Okay. So uh, here you. Yeah. Okay. Not done yet. You have to minus your ambilan. Can you see or not? Ah, we have a minus here. So this 200, even though here we just put 200, but because of the minus in the front, therefore automatically it must have a bracket outside it. So you have a bracket and then 200 like that. Okay, so you minus 200, see what you get? You get 26834. Now this 26834 is uh the modal q right this one we call modal q not done yet we still have to check do we have any other liability all right so yes we have abb as a liability and this abb is a liability what a liability semester so we put liability semester if we have a liability bukan semester we have to put it in juga all right, but in this question, there's no liability bukan semasa. It's just liability semasa. So you just put it in. Liability semasa. Okay, so what is the liability semasa here? The account belum bayar. All right, so ABB account belum bayar. Which is 9,800. Okay, so you add up, that's all right, right? So we can show it, add up already, but as I said, the Joomla here must be at the same line as your Joomla on your credit side. Therefore, you just use this line, all right? Because you use the lower one. So now your asset, you use the 9,980 plus this one, get 36634 and of course don't forget the one line and double line okay and then same goes to your credit side 
use your twin your model are here 26,834 plus your 9,800. Um, see 36,634, 36,634. And when you compare back to your jadwal, 36,734 is the same as the 36,634. You see? So this is the whole answer for it. All right. So you can see all the figure here yang ada punya kat sini. And the reason we don't have belanja and belum bayar is because it is a zero. So when it is a zero, you don't have to put anything. Okay, why do you want to put one item here panggil belanja and belum bayar? And then you put zero kat sini. Can also, tak ada salah. But not practical okay when it is zero in accounting normally we just hide it you don't have to show it out because zero ma okay so okay da. do you understand if yes it give me a yes in the chat box yes give me a yes yes from fairy Shimuro, Shivashni, Shivita, Kadija. Okay, and ye, the rest. Shall we? Yep. Juga. Yes, good. All right, so I will give you another two minutes to count in this stuff, to finish up this stuff. All right. So it's A, B, C. So like that, you get full marks huh? if you get something like that. All right, so I'll give you two minutes to 9.14. Okay, 9.14. Okay, everyone done? Okay, if everyone is done, give me a done again in the chat box. Just to double confirm. Done from everyone. Let's see. Done for sh from Shinro, Shiba Shini, Duga, Chai, Hema. Again, again, some more. Okay. 
uh, five. The rest, not done yet. Civita. Okay. All right. So you have done you haven't done it and you just take a photo and then you later you add it yourself. Okay, complete it later. Okay, so this is all the bug two that you have to know. All right. So uh as you can see, it's very simple, right? This is about two, you just have to know the formula asset equals to liability plus equity firmly. The fact is, if you can look at this uh, PKK, it's actually a, the formula. Here is the asset. Equals to the liability plus equity firmly on your right side. Equity firmly EP. Is it not? So here is all the Joomla asset and here is all the liability plus equity family. That's why the figure here and here is the same. Take note of that. Okay. So, and also I think in uh, last class, I also talked about the Chattatan Contra. All right. So, where is it? Yeah, this is a Chattanooga contra. So there are five, you know. So for now, it's not that important. You just have to know. You just have to know that there is something like that because it will come out in your objective questions. All right. So there are just five. The five are uh, the susunya terkumpul untuk peruntukan hutang ragu the ambilan pulangan jualan and also the pulangan bulan. So just these five. So this is like a opposite. Right, when you have a billion, then there is something called a pulangan billion. When you have a jalan, there is something to oppose it. Okay, to oppose it, which is a pulangan jalan, more that will be ambulan. You see, the ambulan is minus. That's why it is a catatan contra. Right, and same goes for this one. And these two, we will learn in your bab eight. Okay, I think I mentioned it before. Okay, so other than that, oh yeah. Okay, look at this summary classification. So as I said, classification, there are five. The hasil, the belanja, the asset, liability plus equity permanent. These are the five classification. Okay, and in this five classification, normally we'll break down. There is uh, two stuff we, which we call the account nominal and also the account nyata. Okay, but uh, this is not very popular in your exam okay but you just have to know all right so the these two are the account nominal while this three the asset the liability plus equity family we call it the account yata. all right so you can see that because remember just now we did the PKK, the penyata kedudukan kewangan. All right, in this PKK, you only see three things, three classifikasi, which is the asset, the liability, plus equity per All right, they worry about hasil and belanja. Hasil and belanja are in the other place. Later, we learn about something called account berdagangan dan untung rugi. Uh, these are the, this is where the hasil and belanja will go. And they are the account nominal. All right? And this three, we call the account nyata. So, that's all for this nominal nyata. And I think nothing left. All right, so most important from this chapter is you must know 
all the asset. Okay, Bushan is asset bukan semasa, Bushan is asset semasa. Bushan is liability bukan semasa, Bushan is liability semasa. Alright, then equity pemilik, this one, the model plus untung rugi minus ambilan. Okay, and then for the hasil and belanja, you have to know lah. Okay, mana satu ialah hasil and mana satu ialah belanja. So, all the lists are really here. So, sometimes when you're not sure, then you can come back to this nota and uh, find the answer. Alright, so now, let's uh, move on to chapter 3. Okay, let's not waste our time. Because chapter 3 is a bit, um, I would say, uh, a bit, a lot of theories, I would say. Okay, so I haven't given it to you yet. Okay, later I'll send it to the class group. Okay, so this is the BAP3 document. Open again. Okay, if you remember in your textbook, if you have saw it, okay, let me show you again. Textbook, uh, yeah. where is it now? Okay, let me go to this one. Wait, not this one. Okay, there you go. Okay, never mind. Yes, use this one. Okay, so you know that uh, we've seen the the Kitaran Prakanan, right? So in the Kitaran Prakanan, is in your textbook. I think in the first page or second page. You see, the first thing that is actually the document penegan. All right, so now we finally enter into the Kitaran Prekan, okay, which is starting from the Bab tree. All right, then later on, we go down, okay, to Pukuchan Pertama, to Leja, Imbangan Duga, uh, Pelarasan, Imbangan Duga Terselaras, Cetam Penutupan, and lastly, the Penyata uh, Kewangan. All right, so this document. Before you go to the document, you have to know this thing, uh, this three relationship. All right, so later I'll explain about it. And then in document, there is something called a document sumber and also a document bukan sumber. And then you have to know what is a document sumber and then what is the uh, document bukan sumber. And after that, uh, so these are the chonto for document. So here is the definition for it. Okay. And then in this chapter, we have to learn about something called 3D. All right. So 3D is actually what I call the digger duo. So because in this chapter, there are three main things that are the duo punya. So the duo cara untuk membeli, untuk menjual. And then there's also a duo cara untuk mengetahui uh, adakah awak pembekal atau pembeli? Okay, it's okay if you don't understand what it is now. But uh, later as we go on, you will know uh, what it is. Alright, and then there's also dua jenis discount. Ah, Alright, so these are the 3D, the 3 dua. Alright, so we are not going to use this nota to, I'm not going to use this nota to explain. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So you said the kitaran prekan. You can see it. So this is the document. Uh -huh. So we start from here. All right, and go on. And then at the end, you'll come back to here again. Okay, why is it the first one? Because what is a document? Document means evidence. And what is the evidence or proof? All right, just like when I ask uh, you, after you pay your, your tuition fee, to me, all right. So, what do I ask you to send to me? A receipt. Okay, why do we need this receipt? This receipt is a evidence, or in BM, we call it a bukti. 
Ah, bukti apa? Bukti to show that you already paid to me. Kan? So when I say maybe one day I ask uh ask you, eh, kenapa you belum bayar tuition fee lagi? Then you remember you dah bayar. Okay, tapi maybe I forget because there are so many students. So we are, eh, I dah I lupa lah, tapi I ingat you belum bayar lagi. Then what you gonna do? So now you're gonna show me the evidence, the document, the bukti that ah, uh, tengok receipt ini ah uh, for what month, bulan apa, bulan Mei ah uh, berapa yang kamu dah bayar? Can you see? It? So that's why a document for every business is very important. All right, and of course in different country they have different law for it, but in Malaysia, if I'm not mistaken. All the document for a company for a business, you have to keep it for at least seven years, two juta tahun. All right, meaning let's say today, seventeen May twenty twenty two. Okay, so this maybe I draw. Let's say I draw buku. Okay, I have a business registered under SME. Okay, so I draw buku punya. So after I draw the buku, I will get money, and then I will have all the receipt, all the document. So the date will be on seventeen of May, twenty twenty two. Now this same document, I will have to keep it for seven years. Meaning, when can I throw it away? That is twenty twenty. Nine. Yep. So seventeen May twenty twenty nine. Yeah, this is the day that I can burn all the document. I can throw it up. But if now you go and burn it today or tomorrow next year, suddenly if other orang nak come and check, normally it's from LHDN or the government. They want to come and check on your on your document. If you the other support. Mati lah, right? That's why it's important document. Document is to support, to show evidence to, especially to the government lah, to kerajaan, alright, and also to yourself, to ourselves to see, ah, no, because everything must have supporting document evidence, alright. So now the three D, okay. So I did already say the three D later as we go on, we will talk about it, alright. So, uh, here, okay, you can see that I made out the the image or something like a, a diagram for you. So these are my friends, Bob and Jeffrey, and this is me. All right, okay. So in the traditional, typical business, all right, a, I would say typical traditional business. They always must have a supplier, or we call a seller. Who is a supplier? Someone who sells the stuff, all right, to me. And then me, I have to find customer. What about? So this is a very traditional way. So I will buy the baroniaga. Let's say from Bob. I will buy baroniaga into the by the Bob. And then for me to make money, then I have to draw one and go to my customer, which is Jeffrey. Is it? So this is a very typical way, lah. So you go to a restaurant. Okay, let's say I own a restaurant. All right, I have a restaurant. So I have to every day I need to go to the pasta pagi. Okay, go to supermarket to get fresh vegetables. All right, to get the meat. Ah, all these things I need to buy, buy, buy. I buy from. Buy from who? I buy from the seller or the brown egg, right? Okay. Then I come to the restaurant. Then I prepare food, chicken chop, ah, salad. So after that, I need to find someone to buy it. So I need to sell to the customer. So this is the relation. So when I buy brown egg, the brother bought, then he is my seller. Or in BM, we call them kita punya pembekal or pembeli. Pembekal means supplier. 
eh, bukan pembeli pula uh, penjual right someone who sell orang yang menjual barang okay and then between two of us if dia je lah orang yang jual so saya orang yang membeli make sense tak make sense right so when bob sells then i will have to buy if yes make sense you give me a yes right make sense you give me a yes okay so after that after i buy then i need to sell to the customer so when i sell sekarang i become a seller betul tak so i sell to my bob so bob becomes a buyer then when he buys buys from me maksud saya orang yang menjual so you get what i mean so at this moment i can be a seller and also a buyer at the same time depending on am i buying atau saya sekarang jual so you have to look at the keyword adalah kamu membeli atau you menjual uh, this is very important right so the seller is the pembekal penjual and then the buyer will be the pembeli or we call the pelanggan all right very simple so once you get this uh concept smoothly all right you know like you go you know as a person as a business uh in a business we can sell and we can buy also all right then next one will be much easier all right okay so before that okay then you know that there is a document bukan sumber and document sumber all right document bukan sumber is not too important but document sumber is more important here all right document sumber ialah uh Dokumen yang, I would say, do I have definition for it? Not really. So, you know what is sumber or not? Sumber means source. Alright. So, there are some documents yang akan, I would say, support. Or I would say, needed. So this is not needed in the business, okay? To support your daily urus niaga, but then for document symbol yella, you perlu must has to support your daily urus niaga, daily transaction, okay? So document bukan symbol is macam ni lah. So these are the contoh uh, pesanan belian, nota belian, nota serahan sebut harga penyata bank penyata account so all these are actually document yang bukan semua they are just a rujukan or they are just a reference okay reference is not much important okay you just rujuk saja okay but what is important is the document sumber which will come out in the exam maybe okay how do they come out in the exam So a lot of exam they will uh, in the exam a lot of question will be like they will give you a document and then they will ask you how to record it. Uh, so as you go further, come back to this uh, cycle. So they will give you some documents, maybe eight or nine. Okay, from that documents you need to do a buku catatan pertama. Ah uh, later we learn what is buku catatan pertama. Then from buku catatan pertama, we have to do ledger, or sometimes they will skip from document. Sure, we do a ledger, or from document we do a buku catatan pertama. You see, it? so this document will be for document sumber. They won't ask you for document bukan sumber, All right? So that's why it's very important for us to understand each and every one of the document sumber so there are a lot there are many like sleep bank sleep transaksi perbankan electronic urus niaga atas dalam and also i have already provided you with the example here so you just have to see so some are uh, very familiar to you so it's just to provide an, uh, clear understanding to you all right so and also 
if it is important, then I will put a star there, like this one. So this is important. So for this one, like this one without the star, is not too important. All right, you just have to know, just have to be aware of it. But other than that, bukan sangat penting. Right? Normally, it doesn't come out in the exam. Okay, but you still have to know. Just in case. All right, just in case. Okay, so first one, let's go to the slip bank. So this is very simple. All right, what is a slip bank? A document yang perlu disertakan semasa mendeposit wang ke dalam bank. So this is a very old way of depositing wang. Right, a very old way of doing it. Okay, because now, kita, we don't go to bank to to masuk wang. All right, you just maybe you just put into the ATM machine and then you will go into your bank account. But before that, you know, some people they have to queue in the bank, you know, line up in the bank and get the number. All right, you get a number and then you need to get something like this one. So this is provided in the counter. All right, then you go to the counter and then you need to take out this uh this form and then you need to fill in. You no, know, your name, your bank account number, you know how much, your IC number, uh, all this stuff, okay? And then you put the uh, money inside or you, you go to the counter and then you submit with the money that you want to deposit into your bank account. So this is what we call a slip bank or a slip deposit check. All right? So are you clear? If clear, give me a C. So you don't know there is something called a slip bank or a slip deposit check. All right? So really giving you an example, you don't tell me that, oh, you don't know. Yeah, I'll slap you if you don't know. Okay? So next. So this is slip transaction. Okay, this is more common. I think this is something that you have seen before. All right? This is bukti bahawa transaksi telah berjadi lakukan melalui kemudahan transaksi perbankan electronic ATM. All right, so if you go to the ATM, if you've been to the ATM before, if you either you put money into the ATM or you withdraw money from the ATM, then they will have to show a receipt, some kind of receipt. Normally, for those that we don't know, we say, oh, other receipt that. But that, normally, you know, we go to anywhere when they give us a paper, after we pay, then we call it a receipt, 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 receipt. You go to the parking lot, they give you a receipt. You go to this one, the ATM machine, then we call it a receipt. But actually, there are different names for different function, right? So for this one, actually, we call it a slip transaction per bank and electronic. All right, let me repeat again. This is called a slip transaction per bank and electronic. So this is from the ATM. So it's very simple. So from here, you can see that, oh, you cash withdrawal. You can log on one, berapa? Amount 290 ringgit. All right. So, clear? If clear, give me another C. Clear, give me another C. Okay, good. All right. Let's continue. So, I believe all of you have seen this before. Okay, for those who have never seen before, one day, as your parents bring you to the bank. By the way, this is a CIMB bank. It's the same bank that I'm using, a CMB bank, but this is not mine. Lah. Okay, how much is there? This is what? Okay, they didn't show properly. Okay, so let's continue. Ah, this is more leggy common gun. This is called an online transaction. When in BM, we call it a Urus Niaga Atas Talian. So, what is this? This is a Babangan Atas Talian and Joao. Uh, this should be a B, a Bali, Sechara Atas Talian, Sechara Online. Ah, you see, so for those that use a public bank account or your parents are using a public bank account, definitely we've seen this before. All right, so when you do an online transfer to your friends or you make payment to me or to, to somebody else, all right, so how much is it? 100 ringgit, so you type in 100 ringgit to you type in the bank account number of your the person. Let's say now you bagi Amira, all right, so you type in the account number the bank and then the figure and bram 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 and then you click on send. Ah, then you get after send, then they will give you a receipt, some kind of receipt. But it's not a receipt, it's called a Urus Niaga Atas Talent, an online transaction, something like that. All right, so this is a bukti. Remember this? It was 
we are talking about here, all the documents are actually bukti. Bukti that kita telah bayar. Uh, this is the bukti run. All right, okay, next. Sleep daftar to now. Okay, this is very common juga. All right, this is a sleep bayaran yang dikeluarkan daripada mesin daftar tunai selepas bayar. Ah, okay, if you don't understand this one, this one, you must have seen this before. Yes or no? If you have seen this before, give me a yes. No, you give me a no. But of course, not the exact one. Lah, okay, this is the one, the Tesco in Penang. So if you live at uh, KL, then you have the Tesco for the KL. Or you live at Kelantan, then they will, they will have a Tesco in Kelantan, right? Okay, so different Tesco. But what I'm saying is that it's not only in Tesco, but if you go to a restaurant and makan, right? You go to a restaurant, eat, or uh, normally restaurant, you see it. Lah, right? So after you pay, they'll give you this one. And then we call it a receipt. Betul tak? But here, to be more specific, it's called a sleep daftar tonight. Ah, all right. So this is to what to buktikan, uh, selepas you buy All right. So the machine normally because all the cashier what ah when you have a cashier, the machine. All right. So after you pay the ti 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 ti, and then they print out the receipt. So there's a machine daftar tonight. All right. So this is in a more real example, but then in the exam or from SPM normally they, they will do something like this. All right. So from here we know how much ah. So this is the jumlah. So let's say if they ask you berapa yang uh, amount yang perlu dibayar. Uh, amount yang perlu dibayar ialah 22,000. I mean 22,000 pula. It's 22 ringgit. right? So amount yang perlu dibayar is 22 ringgit. Is it? Tapi kita ada 30 ringgit. So we use 30 ringgit. We pay 30 ringgit. And then they baki. They return the balance 8 ringgit to us. right? So this is a contoh for the sleep daftar tonight. Okay, next again, bill bayaran. Alright, so this is a maklumat kepada pelanggan tentang bayaran utility. What is bayaran utility? Bayaran utility is the same term for kada bayaran. If you remember what is kada bayaran, uh, when I explain in the bab 2 under the belanja. Alright, so kada bayaran is all the... Belanja such as your telephone bill, your bill electric, your bill IA, your bill Wi-Fi, uh, all this, normally these four items are, uh, okay, when you have these four items, we consider it as a kada bayaran. All right, and normally this kada bayaran, we have a document bank, you bill bayaran. Let's say you use TM, like uh, Unify or TM, all right? So in your house, so every month, setiap bulan, they will give you a bill bayaran. So they will show their company name. So show you know also berapa yang perlu bayar. So jumlah yang perlu dibayar is one hundred and forty nine ringgit forty five cent. Is it okay? This is for your maybe either telephone or Wi Fi. But if it is bill electric, ah, this you must have seen it. This uh, seen this before because this standard for the whole Malaysia, right? So this is a TNB from TNB. So this is a bill electric. Can you see or not? So this is how much I'm perlu dibayar. This is 67 ringgit. Yeah, so either the bill electric, bill telephone, bill IA or from Shabas, which is your bill IA, then it is a bill bayaran, right? So very straightforward. Okay, next, this is called a folio pelanggan. The yeah, folio pelanggan is a document yang menyenaraikan perkhidmatan yang telah diberikan kepada pelanggan dan rekod pembayaran yang berkenaan disediakan dalam sektor perkhidmatan seperti sektor perhotelan, perkhidmatan pros dan kuliah, hospital dan firma guaman. Okay, so this is an example that I provide for you. So if now you go to the somewhere like a post laju, JNT. ABX, I think now is quite common to us, right? Because of uh, COVID-19, now everyone shop online from Shopee, Lazada. So we know all this uh, perkhidmatan post and uh, career, right? The post that you JNT. So, but if we want to post barang kepada kawan, 
or if you do a, a, a small business, you want to post something to other people, then you have to go to post like you. You have to go to the company like JNT Express. Contoh sini. So, at there, you have to fill up something we call a folio pelanggan. The folio about the customer. All right? Like a profile. You get me? So, from here, you let out your name, your phone number, and then where you are sending this parcel to. All right? Let's say you nak jual baju. So, mana yang kamu nak hantar kepada all right, so this is the address, the name, you know, and then uh, the price of the KG and so on. All right, so this is a bukti run, a bukti that you have used their perkhidmatan. So if you go to a hotel, then they have a different uh, different formula for you to fill in, okay, to show that, okay, you actually come to this hotel, and then this hotel actually has this customer, something like that. All right, but not very important, as I said, don't have a star. So what is important is now this one. Can you just start here? Uh, this is much more important. You have to pay attention to. So this is a memo. All right, a memo. So what is a memo? Memo is a document digunakan. Okay, highlight this keyword. Oleh pemilik penegaan. Sebagai pekandi kepada ketiadaan dokumen sokongan. So this memo is normally used by the family when there is no supporting document. All right? When there is no supporting document, family will close one memo. Okay, chonto. Okay, what are the most common one? Normally, it's ambulance. Remember what is ambulan? And then the moda tambahan. Ah. Alright, because ambulan, when you ambil barang, with the other document. Alright, akan they go and keluar a folio pelanggan to you. Akan they go and keluar satu bill buyer. Bill buyer is normally from the company. Use their uh, telephone line, use their electric, then only they keluarkan uh, this bill buyer to you. But now you go and ambil barang, Let's say ambil kasut for your own business, tak akan ada company yang keluarkan this document to you, right? So, sekarang we ourselves as a pemilik, we have to keluarkan barang panggil memo. So, contoh ah, for this memo, so the name of the company, let's say, uh, Pembekal Alatan Pejabat Remy, okay? So, what happens? So, you need to write out what it is. Okay, which date, tarik. Okay, then now, you see, a permanent memasukkan tunai 10,000 ke dalam account bank perniagaan sebagai modal tambahan. Can you see? So, when you have a modal tambahan, you have to record like that. Okay, and at the same time, dan mengeluarkan tunai di tangan untuk bayaran balik belanja tunai rincit. Okay, so, can you see? Uh, mengeluarkan, but this is not uh, important, but important here is a modal tambahan. Alright, okay, another example. So, this is a memo by Syarikat Indah Sendian Perhat. Okay, so what did the pemilik do? The pemilik telah mengeluarkan barang niaga 15 ring untuk kegunaan kelegan. Can you see or not? Whenever you see a untuk kegunaan sendiri, peribadi, peribadi, keluargaan sendiri, keluarga sendiri, anak, isteri, suami, whatever, as long as it is for our own self, then it is ambulan. So when it is an ambulan, then we have to use memo to record. All right? Either modal tambahan or ambulan, we use memo. So this is a bit important because normally it will come out in the questions. If other this, this type of question, then you have to know. All right? So you have to read and then understand. Is it ambulan or modal tambahan? All right? So do you understand for this memo? If yes, give me an M for memo. Understand? You give me an M for memo. Good. Okay, let's go for the last one before we call it a day, right? So, 
Next, a keratan check as you can see is this one. What is a keratan check? You saw a check word? Okay, but check is not the check. Now we are talking about the keratan check. It's different from the check. All right. So let me read the definition first. It is the bagian check yang tertinggal selepas check diceraikan. Okay. Means you go yeah after you go yeah. Okay. Daripada buku check dan mengandungi butiran pembayaran check and deposit. Yeah. So for those that have seen a check book before, this is a check book. Very long. That. Ada, semua ada. Okay, so this is a checkbook. So you can see there are two parts here. Hmm, this different color. So you can see there are two parts here. Let's say this is one straight line. So we break down to like that. So there is A and B. Is it not? Right. So normally when we fill up. You want to write a check, then you write the name, how much in terms of English. So like, let's say you want to pay two thousand four hundred sixteen, then you write two thousand four hundred and sixteen. Okay, only something like that. Okay, and then you make your signature here, and then write the amount again, and then the date here. Okay, after that. We have to do something again, all right? Which is beside this small part, the A part, which we call a keratan check. This is not this part we call it a check. But in this small part on your left is a keratan check. Then same the date, it must be the same. Who? And then the number of the check is it or the invoice? What is it for? All right? This is the kegunaan. What is it for? And how much? So it must be the same. So after that, then you can tear up. Or sometimes you just tear up first. You tear right gun. Only you write. But most importantly, you have to write so that we know that this check actually go to where. All right. So when we zoom in this A part, then you come to here. So it's something like that. So this is where the the question would be like. Okay, to show up in your question. So this is the day. Uh, who is the one that receiving this check? So let's say here, kita bayar kepada syarikat Jaya Senyum Bahar. So they are the penerimaan. Mereka terima. So when they terima, they terima daripada kita. Maksudnya kita yang bayar kepada kita. I mean, bayar kepada kita pula. Bayar kepada mereka. You know what I mean? Okay, for what? So this is the kegunaan. Untuk apa? Bayar untuk apa? Oh, bayar untuk beli barang niaga. You see it? And how much? Okay, very important here. So there are a baki akhir, a deposit, jumlah, check ini, and baki. So how do we know how much check ini yang kita bayar? So you look at this one, check ini. All right, you don't have, you don't look at the baki deposit or jumlah. You, we don't care about it. You just look at the check ini is two thousand. Okay, so this is two thousand ringgit. Kita telah bayar dua ribu ringgit to syarikat Jaya Sembilan Bahar. And what is the number check? Because every check you saw you saw this all this number. Ah, all these are number check. There's a record for it. So next time when you want to find out, eh, what is the number for four three one? What is it for? So you go to your, you check ah, you flip to two nine four four three one, and then it will be there. All right, so it's very important this ah uh, curtain check. Do you all understand? If yes, give me a yes. Y e s yes. Okay, very good. Okay, so I uh, will just stop here for this chapter three. But before I let you leave, of course, I need to give you some homework to do, right? So the homework, get ready. So um, form four, you go to page your book workbook. Okay, page twenty nine. You will have to do a question twenty three. Question twenty four and 
question, you skip to question 26. Okay, 23, 24, 23, and 24 are questions for your persamaan per accountant. All right, so do more practice for this type of questions. And of course, when you look at question 23, they don't they didn't ask you to do the jadwa persamaan per accountant, right? But you can see that the jalan kerja hendaklah ditunjukkan, meaning for in order for you to do a PKK, you have to do the jadwa persamaan per accountant. The so same goes to question 24. All right. So even though question 24, they just say money digan PKK, but you send you have to do a general personal account, then only you can come to the penetral kedusan kawangan. All right. And then for question 26, is a very short, easy question for chatatan contract. All right. So you just copy from the nota. All right. But if you remember, then you just write from what you remember. Let's say for account bullion. The Shannon control will be Mulangan Berlian. The account belum terima, the Shannon control will be what? The Pound to come Hutan Ragu. So you just put it in. Okay. The, the point of doing this is just to refresh your memory. Okay. And lastly, you go to page, page one. Why page one? Page one, you have to do some objective questions. All right. Objective questions. So there are 25 questions for page one, but one. So you just complete all the 25 questions just to refresh your memory on Bab Satu. Okay. All right. Is there any other question? If no questions and you have already jotted down all the homework, then you may leave and I will see you in next class. All right. So see you. Goodbye, everyone. Bye-bye.